And China also lashing out at Japan after Tokyo's defense white paper raised concerns about China's military capabilities. Now, for a closer look, we're joined by Dr. Jeffrey O'Daniel, Director of Maritime Program at the U.S. Pacific Forum. Dr. O'Daniel, thanks for joining us this evening. First up, what stands out for you in this year's um, Japanese White Paper Report? Oh, good evening. Thanks for having me. I think what stands out from the Defense White Paper this year is not really the list of threats that Japan and the region are facing, because frankly, um, with the exception of the pandemic, there is really nothing totally new in that defense white paper. I think what is different this time around is the reframing of these issues. Obviously, there is a conscious effort on the part of the Japanese to um, situate continuing disruptive and assertive Chinese policies in areas like the South China Sea and East China Seas in a way that would appear even more scandalous, right? Because you know Chinese assertiveness in the South China Sea, for instance, has been happening for uh, some time, even before the pandemic. Um, but the, but the fact that the world has been grappling with the worst global public health crisis in a century makes these activities um, even more repulsive and opportunistic. There is the idea that the international community should be squarely focused on cooperation in trying to combat COVID-19. And Japan has capitalized on this and connected the pandemic to the regional tensions that Beijing has been causing. Perhaps um, another thing that is probably different from previous white papers is how Japan has recognized the impact of coronavirus, coronavirus to its own defense. Um, there is that statement um, on the white paper that says the spread of the virus has impacted and restricted military operations. I assume uh, that is in relation to U.S. military's own issues. You know, early this year, there was an outbreak at an aircraft carrier. Quite recently, a significant number of U.S. service member based in Okinawa tested positive for coronavirus. So these things could potentially impact military operations and readiness, but we can only speculate that remains uh, to be seen, um, but the white paper shows that Japan is mindful of that. Um, finally, I think what is new here is the highlighting of the role of the Japanese self-defense force in the fight against COVID-19. It's the first time that a defense white paper has characterized China's actions around their disputed islets as relentless. So why is Japan sort of changing the tone, if you like, of their report? I think relentless is an accurate depiction. It has indeed been relentless. If you look at the statistics uh, compiled by the Japanese government, uh, the Japanese or uh, the Chinese government vessels have been uh, intruding into areas within the territorial sea and contiguous zone of the Senkaku Islands since around the summer of 2010. So it's been about 10 years. I don't know if we can put the uh, meaning into that word. But perhaps Japan also wants to highlight the persistence of Chinese efforts to uh, reverse the status quo of the disputed land features in the East China Sea, the status quo being that they are uh, under Japan's effective administration. The white paper was released just as U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo lashed out at China over the South China Sea. I want to you know, get your thoughts on the timing of this. I think that was a, that was a good timing because uh, for the longest time we've been waiting for the United States to really uh, uh, be more forceful in its assertion uh, of China's uh, uh, non-constructive role in the South China Sea. And, and if, this is significant because the United States has finally aligned its decision with the 2016 Arbitral Tribunal uh, ruling. Um, this is an indication that probably uh, the United States is now more than willing to uh, pursue its interest in the South China Sea, particularly on freedom of navigation, and not only freedom of navigation, but also the rights of coastal states uh, towards their own exclusive economic zone and continental shelf. Uh, the disputed territories, the U.S. has no position on them, but when it comes to uh, maritime claims, claims to exclusive economic zone, continental shelf, territorial waters, um, the uh, the types of features or disputed features, whether they're rocks or islands, or uh, low tide elevations or submerged features, the United States has made it clear through that statement that now they have a position on those issues. The review also hints at China being a longer term and more serious threat than nuclear armed North Korea. It's estimated that Beijing now spends four times as much as Tokyo on defense. Now, how would this affect relations between both countries? Uh, I think there is really 
no impact on on the strategizing uh, here in Japan. I think Japan has for the longest time been expecting China to uh, increase its defense spending as its economy grows. Uh, there is, however, now a renewed focus on deterrence. Uh, the Japanese will have to figure out how they how they can uh, keep China at bay, considering uh, the massive defense spending of the Chinese, uh, something that obviously Japan can't match. Okay, many thanks for your thoughts this evening. Dr. Jeffrey Ordaniel, Director of Maritime Programs at the U.S. Pacific Forum.